तेरी आपको था विष्ट हुए आजूर नयाने कृष्णो बिरोह उपलब्धि करते रंगन करते अष्टसाध्य विकारे समस्त रूप प्रकाश आर्मत तक हम देखा किसे तो जब हम समस्त जगत पासी कार्य के मुख्य रह जाते हैं ये उपलब्धि कार जब हम कृष्णो रंगावन थे के कौन से आदेश हैं उपलब्धि के प्रेरण को लें तो कौन सा आदेश दे रहे हैं उपलब्धि तुम्हें रंगावन किए कृष्ण एवं भगवान के रंगावले अनुर भंगों जगतों इस समस्त अनुष्ठाने जगदान प्रार्थना करने तादर के आमंत्रण पर नियेशो परिकाल पुना चिलो कि कृष्ण भगवान के खाने नियेशे ताके सामने सामने परास्त कर दे असुर बुद्धि तीक्ष्ण अंतर तो ताय आमंत्रणे भान करने तादर के नियास दे लगे ताके दिए नतीजे मित्री पर ओकुर के दिए का संपन्न कर लगे ओकुर जबान बिंदावन थे के नंद महाराज गोपकीदे नाना प्रकार शांतना दिए बुझिए सुझिए कृष्ण भगवान के आमंत्रण पर नियास चें तब उन्हें ओकुर घाट इखाने ऐसे दिन जुमना नदी दे अप्रमुरादे इखाने स्नान करते जान इतनी जो बिंदावन एवं मथुरा संयुक्त हो बिंदावन ऐसे स्थान पर एवं मथुरा ऐसे स्थान पर इखाने जबान जुमना स्नान करते गए चें स्नान करे तिरिताजे � पासना तेरी मंत्रों जोग करते लगे चें करते करते तेरी दौसा को चें जी कृष्ण एवं बलराम के ताके ध्याने दौसा को चें तेरी परमोत्य ध्यान थे के प्रकाश से जी रोकने ऊपर देख चें शिक्षण में कृष्ण बलराम वर्तमान तब उन तेरी आवार से जो उन्हें अंधे स्नान करते लें दुबे शिक्षण में देखते पहले कृष्ण � ये औरतों अत्याचार जो दर्शन करें तो नहीं पूछ लें कि कृष्ण बलराय में बच्चे साक्षात पुरुष न प्रभु सना था तो हम श्री भगवान ने स्तोत्र स्तुति करें दर्नवत प्रणति पल इस थाने एक समय नंद महाराज एकादशी दिवसे एकादशी परवर्ती काले जे दादशी दादोसी चार थागे एक भाग सेकाओ उपवास जोगो दादोसी एकादोसी मोते जुगतो हुए चे एमन समय रामों मोते पूर्वे आसुरिक काल से रात्रि काले तेरी जमुना स्नान करते गए चे जमुना स्नान करते आसुरी रह जाले Yeah. 
boys and animals all came to see Krishna. And they began lamenting and weeping and crying. And, and gradually all of them began fainting in every direction. And especially the virgin gopis, they were fainting everywhere. So now, Akrur, uh, he thought, how will it be possible to take Krishna from here? But Krishna had very uh, cunningly taken the gopis into a nearby punja, and he reassured them that I will return. Do not worry, I will return. So now Sri Krishna and Gaura finally mounted the chariot after Akrur had again inspired them that he must come to Madhura. The parents, your parents are being tortured by Kamsa. <coughs> so now, Krishna and Gaura mounted the chariot, and now Akrur began trying to drive, but in all directions the Rajagopis, they were pulling the reins of the horses, and they were throwing their bodies in the trail uh, in which the chariot was moving, so that the chariot could not move. And in this way, somehow or other, they were trying desperately to keep Krishna from leaving Vrindavan. But finally, somehow or other, Akrur managed to dodge all of these different bodies on the ground, and gradually he began to take off with Krishna and Bhavara and his chariot off into the distance. And the rich Vasis stood like pillars, fainting on the ground and looking at the chariot of Kamsa and disappear into the distance. So in this way, finally, Krishna uh, and Balaram came on the chariot of Akrura to this place Akrura got, not so far from Madhura. And there it became the evening time, the time for Sandhya, for performing Anik. So Akrura stopped there at this pond. There was a pond, uh, like a bathing pot there. And Akrura now submerged himself uh, into the pond. And when he dumped himself down inside the pond, meditating upon the mantra of his Ishtade, Lord Narayan, who did he see? He saw Krishna and Balra inside of the pond. So he was wondering, what is this? Instead of seeing his Ishtade, Lord Narayan, with four arms, now he saw Krishna and Balra there. Then he came up from the water, and he glanced over at the chariot. And again he saw Krishna and Balra sitting on the chariot. He was wondering, what is this? Then when he again came down into the mud, now he saw the manifestation of Lord Narayan lying on the bed of Anantashesh, being served by Lakshmi Devi, his lotus feet being massaged, and all great sages like Narada and Vyas and so many uh, personified Vedas offering prayers to the Supreme Lord. So what is the significance of this? That actually, this is the borderline between Vrindavan and Mathura. They are completely worlds apart, although in miles they are not a very great distance. But in the measurement of rasa, from the viewpoint of rasa vichar, they are worlds and worlds of difference apart. And actually, it is known from Shastra that Vrindavan Pritya Padapetam Nagarjuna. That Sri Krishna, Bhagavan himself, Swayam Bhagavan Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda, the son of Nanda Maharaj, he never even takes one step out of Vrindavan. And also, Rohini Nanda Maladev Prabhu, he is also an eternal resident of Raj, he also never takes one step out of Vrindavan. So, therefore, the question has to be asked then who was going on the chariot of Akrur to go to Mathura? Actually, this was the expansion of Krishna, not the complete Purna Krishna, but the expansion of Krishna, known as Vasudev Nandana, and Baladev Prabhu, also known as Vasudev Nandana, Devaki Nandana. So in this way, now Akrur began to take the chariot to Mathura, and in this way, Krishna and Balaram went, Nanda Maharaj also came, on chariots, later on, on bullock carts, and he was also going there to Mathura. That is another pastime. So in this way, this, this place of Purugat, it is a very highly auspicious place where the transcendental spiritual world was manifested to Akrur. And also in this place, Nanda Maharaj one time was performing the Ekadasi Grant, and he was going to take bath 
at a particular time in the evening when it was not considered auspicious. It was actually a time when Asuric influences are prominent. So when he began to take bath in that same pond, oh, what happened? On oh, the Varuna day, who is the demigod of all the waters, he came and he, uh, his messengers came and took Radha Maharaj. So now Sri Krishna, searching for his father Nanda Maharaj, understood that Varuna day had taken him to Varuna Lok. So now Sri Krishna himself went there. And when he came there to Varuna Lok, now Varuna day, he began to offer so many prayers to Krishna. And he began to show so much honor and respect to Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Nanda Maharaj, who of course only ever sees Krishna as his dear little beloved son, he was very surprised. So when he came back, uh, when Krishna brought him back after this, then Nanda Maharaj told to the rich Vasis his experience, what he experienced. And now the rich Vasis began to think, oh, let us ask Krishna that we can have a darshan of the transcendental part now.
तो कृष्णा को आप वृंदावन में ले आए वृंदावन को दिखाए एक कौन तारा भाव है बस कृष्ण को हम यहाँ पर पुत्र पा सकते हैं सब प्रेम कर सकते हैं ये इसलिए गुरुओं से भी बढ़ करके द्वारका द्वारका से भी बढ़ करके मथुरा मथुरा से भी बढ़ करके वृंदावन उसी वृंदावन को गुरु
So as soon as the coward boys went to the wives of the Brahmanas, the Brahmanas, having heard about Krishna for a long time, and now having great greed for his darshan, they became overwhelmed with delight and told the boys, no need for you to take it. We'll ourselves bring all the foodstuffs to Krishna and Balaram, which they did in many large plates. They brought all four kinds of foodstuffs, that which is swallowed, that which is sucked, that which is licked up, that which is chewed. And they came in great ecstasy to Krishna and Balaram. Krishna did to the Brahman, Brahmanis, he was very happy to see them and very affected by their praying. And he did to them very similar what he did to the gopis when he called them by playing on his flute. He told them, oh, so now you've come and uh, thank you very much for this prasadam. Now you should go home. So when he had told the gopis that, when the gopis heard from him, all kinds of instructions, how the greatest elevated position for a woman is to be chased to her husband, even if he's lame, even if he's very cruel or angry, he has a bad character, even if he's toothless, black, ugly, still the highest duty of a wife is to serve the husband. So when the gopis had heard this from Krishna, they said, oh, this is a very wonderful instruction. And this instruction, given with so much evidence from the Vedas and with uh, consideration of societal rules and regulations, this proves that you are our guru. And we know that the first person that has to be served is guru. Husbands can come later, God can come later, but first thing is to serve our guru. So we'll stay here and serve you. So Krishna said, well, don't you know that I'm the Supreme Personality of Godhead? So then they said, yes, we've heard that you said in the Bhagavad Gita that you reciprocate with the love of your devotees. So if you now don't reciprocate with us, then a great sin will come upon your head. So Krishna was trying to do this to the Jagyapadnis also. He told them that the greatest success is to serve one's self-interest. One has to know what is one's self. And he indicated that I am the Supreme Self. So you should follow my instructions and go back to your husbands who need your assistance in their sacrifice. The wife is considered the half-body of the husband and the husband cannot perform sacrifices successfully without his wife. So they were trying to pose arguments just like the gopis, but they were not, they didn't have the qualification of the gopis. As you've heard from the Vaishnavas today and from Chula Verde, our Jagya Stali, just like a Pura God, is located on the border of Vrindavan and Mathura. Although they're only two fingers apart, because the border of Vrindavan meets with the border of Mathura. So much, oh, there's so much difference. They're so far apart. Radharani never went to Mathura. So they're far apart because of mood. In Vrindavan, there's so much sweetness, even though there's actually more opulence than there is in Mathura, or more opulence than there is in Dwarka, more opulence than there is in Vaikuntha even. There's so much sweetness that that opulence is not tasted. But in Mathura, that opulence is tasted. So Yoga Maya inspired Krishna within his heart that although he was impressed by their praying, he uh, manifested his opulence to them and told them that insisted that they go back to their husbands and that he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead and that went into their hearts because they are not Vrtvasis but they are Maturavasis. So they acquiesced with some uh, arguments, they tried to argue, but because of the sense of opulence 
and only the intellectuals so the love there are not even there. Krishna wants to show all the Madhura Vaisis, the Dwarka Vaisis, the Vaikanta Vaisis, that I'm only controlled by the love of the rich Vaisis, and I engage in all kinds of loving pastimes with them. And I want to bring everyone up to uh, appreciate them and have the greed to serve like them. So first, the Nagapatni said, well, if we go home to our husbands, they're not going to accept us anyway. They told us that if you go, then you might as well not come back. In fact, they tried to threaten us. And some Jagipatis were locked in their rooms as the gopis were. So they also left their material bodies and went to Krishna. But because of their sense of opulence, they, they had some humility, they had some respect there. And they said, well, we know that although they had Madhuri Ras, touch in their heart. They said, we know that we're not qualified to engage with you in Madhurya Lila. We know that we're not qualified like the gopis. So we won't even go to your village. We'll just stay in the forest and we'll put on the nets the garlands that you share with the gopis and that you toss away. So because of their uh, somewhat of awe and reverence, even though they had so much praying, that as soon as they saw Krishna, and they saw, as Sukadeva Goswami described, Shamam Sharanya Paridim Paramahya Varga, that Krishna appeared to them in a very beautiful cloud like complexion. And his yellow Pitambara was just like a streak of lightning, and his curly hair was just like bumblebees bouncing upon his face, his uh, head was bedecked with peacock feathers and sprigs of buds of various flowers and leaves. He wore very beautiful forest garlands. So they were very attracted by him, absorbed in him. And they saw that he was standing with his arm on the shoulder of his friend and twirling a clay lotus flower. Krishna was, Krishna was saying to them that I know that your hearts are twirling for me and I, I captivated that in my heart. But because of their opulence, they finally acquiesced and went back to their husbands. Krishna told them that I'm speaking in your husband's hearts that they will not be angry with you. So when they went back, their husbands not only weren't angry with them, but they now they were so much lamenting that they had not respected Krishna Balaram, who all the opulences in all the universes are within his body. And yet, out of his desire to help them become bhaktas, he was begging from them. So they said, fie on our rabbinical uh, birth, fie on our uh, having the sacred thread, fie on our knowing all the Vedic sacrifices. These Brahmanis, although they did no austerities like us, although they're not, although they are simple wives, they do not know the Vedas like us, yet because they have so much devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they're so much superior to us. So they lamented and repented, and now they wanted to go to Krishna just like their wives did. But they were afraid of Kamsa, that if Kamsa's spies find out, then Kamsa will arrange to have us killed. So they ended up not going. So because of so many obstacles through their narjas and their pride, they were covered by fear, whereas their wives didn't care if they were killed, didn't care about anything. So there's so many instructions in these beautiful leelas of Krishna. Tattva is included in leela. And when we hear them from the pure devotees, like Srila Gurude, then something comes in our heart and a grief comes to serve like the bridge buses and become free from our greed to serve our material senses.
अपने पतियों को छोड़ करके घर बार सब छोड़ करके गई किंतु कृष्ण ने ग्रहण नहीं किया इसका कारण ये है ग्रहण तो किया किंतु उन्होंने गोपियों जैसे राशि इत्यादि ये सब मिली नहीं क्योंकि कृष्ण धर्म की मर्यादा प्रतिष्ठित करने के लिए आए हैं वे हैं ब्राह्मणी यदि कोई गोपी हो और वो गोपी भी छोटी उम्र की हो बारह तेरह चौदह वर्ष की कहीं शादी नहीं हुई हो कोई बच्चा नहीं हो सब गुण सतत गुण संपन्न ऐसी गोपी के साथ में राशि इत्यादि कर सकते हैं उनके साथ में विलाई कर सकते हैं तो ये तो ब्राह्मणी है इसलिए धर्म रक्षा के लिए ब्राह्मणियों को उन्होंने लौटा दिया किंतु लौटाया नहीं ऊपर से तो लौटाया किंतु भीतर से क्यों मैं आपके प्रभाव से ये सुनिश्चित कर दिया कि तुम लोग दूसरे जन्म में गोपी होकर के आए उस समय तुम्हारी इच्छा पूर्ण था कर्ण कारण निवासी सात हजार ऋषि लोग यदि उनको पाने की इच्छा कर रहे हैं तो उनको गोपी मिला लेकिन वो क्यों नहीं मिलेगा उसमें उस सामूहिक रूप में आई संबंध में विस्तृत रूप से बताया है भक्त 
अपनी परेशान अनुभव विरक्ति प्रवृत्ति प्राप्ति एक ही समय में होती है कहा चुका है कि साधन भक्ति वैदिक भक्ति अथवा रागानुगा प्रारंभिक अवस्था में ही क्लेशों को नाश करने वाली और समस्त सुख गुणों को उत्पन्न कर लेना हो सकती है कि साधन भक्ति क्लेशों का नाश और सुख गुणों का प्रदान दोनों काम का एक साथ ही में होता है या पहले भक्ति के विघ्न नाश हो जाते हैं तब सुख होता है इसके लिए चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर कहते हैं भागवत का प्रमाण देकर भक्ति परेशान जैसे भोजन किया जाता है प्रति ग्रास जो खा रहे हैं उसके साथ में ही तृप्ति अथवा सुष्टि जीवनी शक्ति का संचार और खुदा निवृत्ति ये तीनों एक साथ में होते हैं यहाँ तक कि एक चावल का पानी या रोटी का टुकड़ा खाने पर भी साथ ही साथ वैसा ही उसी रूप में ये तीनों चीजें होंगी वैसे ही जो मनुष्य भगवान की शरण दे करके भक्ति भक्ति का साधन करता है परेश अनुभव और भगवान के प्रति प्रेम परेश अनुभव अनुभव देता है और प्रेमास्पद प्रभु के स्वरूप का अनुभव और अतिरिक्त विषयों में बहरा होगा ही यदि उसको तत्व ज्ञान नहीं होता है विश्व में बराबरी नहीं होता है भगवान की अनुभूति नहीं होती तो भक्ति का साधन नहीं कर रहा है हम लोगों में बहुत से लोग हैं है हम लोगों के साथ में ऊपर से मालूम होता है कि हर नाम कर रहे हैं किंतु वो बेसियों का चिंतन करते हैं इसलिए उनको संसारिक हृदय में आ जाती भक्ति भक्ति का का उसी प्रकार से भक्ति लता की भक्ति लता अपनी और सुखदा दोनों पत्तियां एक काल में पैदा होने पर भी उनकी पृथ्वी के तारतम्य से जितना ही साधन बढ़ता जाएगा और विद्या और क्लेश उतने परिमाण में दूर होते जाएंगे और शुभ को वृत्तिया भी उतने परिमाण में आते जाएंगे समझो जितने प्रकार में भक्ति अधिक रूप में भक्ति का साधन होगा उतने ही परिमाण में अनर्थ दूर होंगे और शुभ गण साथ ही साथ एक किंतु इसमें एक क्रम है किंतु क्रम इतना सूक्ष्म है जैसे हम एक रास न खाया हम नहीं समझ सकते कि हमारा पेट किस पर दो ग्रास चार ग्रास का आधा खाने तो मालूम हो जाए और पेट भरने को अब पूरा जब खा लेंगे और और चाहिए कुछ रसगुल्ला ये नहीं नहीं आप खाने से फिर उसकी विरक्ति हो जाए उसी प्रकार से इसमें भी एक क्रम है जिसको इतना सूक्ष्म और दुर्लभ है दुर्लभ है दुर्लक्ष है कि सहज बोध को मालूम नहीं होता किंतु है 
भोजन में प्रवृत्त व्यक्ति के ग्रास के साथ ही दुर्गम पुष्टि पुष्टि और उदार वृत्ति अंशिक रूप में हुआ कितना कायम या अंश रूप में होता है केवल यही नहीं एक एक अन्न के भीतर में वो शक्ति है किंतु हमको उस समय स्तर का मालूम नहीं होता भक्ति के संबंध में भी ऐसा ही समय है कभी कभी हम लोग विचार करते हैं कि श्रद्धा भी हमारे अंदर में आई रही कि नहीं इतना दिन 20, 25, 30, 40 वर्ष हो गए 50 वर्ष हो गए साधन किया भगवत अनुभूति कुछ नहीं हुई कुछ कुछ आनंद इसमें नहीं आ रहा किंतु उस समय में भी जो सच्चे साधक हैं कुछ न कुछ भक्ति के साधन के तारतम्य से उनमें भगवान की अनुभूति हुई यदि हम कहें द्वारका में रुक्मणी के साथ हैं रुक्मणी जैसे ही आप पटरानी कृष्ण की हो जाए तो मैं समझता हूं कि कोई भी नहीं क्यों कुछ न कुछ अनुभूति आई है कुछ विषयों के प्रति विरक्ति थी आई है कि और हम कुछ नहीं चाहते हैं राधा दास के अतिरिक्त हम कुछ भी नहीं जगत में लेना चाहते इसलिए कुछ अनुभूति हुई है विषयों से बराग्य तो सबको नहीं कर सकते सच्चे साधन कर रहे हैं उनके लिए तत्र श्रद्धा उदय रंगकाल श्री चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर भक्ति का स्वरूप बताया भक्ति की स्वरूप प्रकाश होता है भक्ति के ऊपर किसी का अवसर किसी का अंकुश नहीं है स्वतंत्र इच्छा वही जहां तहां भी वो प्रकट हो सकती है बाकी लोगों के हृदय में भी हो सकती है और बुद्धिमान सदाचारी जाति ब्राह्मण जैसे लोगों के हृदय में भी भक्ति नहीं हो सकती बुद्धि विद्या बल के ऊपर में विभाग नहीं करना हाँ श्रद्धा जरूर होना चाहिए नहीं रहने से भक्ति कभी नहीं होती और यहाँ ग्रंथ के मूल विषय प्रतिपाद्य विषय तब साधन भक्ति के स्तर का बढ़ अरे तो स्तर में है श्रद्धा अब आरंभ करें श्रद्धा ही भक्ति साधन का प्रथम स्तर शरणागति भक्ति नहीं है उसका द्वार है द्वार तक पहुंचा देती है बस और साधन का जो वहां पर है तो श्रद्धा प्रथम सीढ़ी है सोपान मंदिर में प्रवेश करने के लिए पहला सोपान श्रद्धा भक्ति सब जानी सौरभौम साधन भक्ति में सभी का प्राणी मात्र का अधिकार है कृष्ण भजन अधिकारी की की चाहे वो नारी पुरुष हो समस्त लोग ही पापी हो जगाई बधाई जैसा व्यक्ति हो अजामिल जैसा पापी हो जिनको श्रद्धा हो गई बस अधिकारी अतए भक्ति साधन में जाति स्थान देश काल इत्यादि यहां तक कि अमेरिका में इंग्लैंड में कहीं भी भक्ति हो सकती आज वहां के हजारों लोग आ रहे हैं भक्ति की बात शुरू करके श्रद्धा का उदय हुआ इसलिए और भी भक्ति और बड़े अनुभूति हो और अंत में हम लोग प्रेम पा सके इसके लिए लोग आते हैं 
क्योंकि चैतन्य चैतामित में कहा गया श्रद्धा मान जन हन भक्ति अधिकारी भक्ति का अधिकार कहाँ है श्रद्धा जिसको हो गई कोई भी हो प्राणी मात चाहे बंदर भालू हो चाहे कुछ भी जहां पर चेतना का विकास है मनुष्य में अधिक है इसलिए सभी लोग सभी जाति के लोग पापी तापी सभी अधिक है केवल भक्ति की साधना में नहीं कर्म ज्ञान योग तपस्या में भी यदि भक्ति श्रद्धा नहीं है तो फल नहीं है
How is this arranged? We have heard, we are hearing, that the attainment of auspiciousness is, is simultaneous to the amount of inauspiciousness which is destroyed. This is evidence in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakti, Paravaresh, and Mahavirakta. We discussed this last night. Therefore, both of these symptoms, the destruction of clash, obstacles, and the attainment of auspiciousness, are both there for both Raghavanga Bhakti and Vaidhi Bhakti. Therefore, how does this occur? Do both of them are both of them occur simultaneously? Or is it first that inauspicious things are destroyed and then auspiciousness is attained? Therefore, an example is given in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like in eating, with every mouthful that is taken, we experience tripti satisfaction, pushti, bodily strength, and kundavriti, sustained freedom from hunger. Therefore, this point is very subtle. Even every grain of rice or every piece of chapati that I eat, these three things will be experienced. Thus, all humans have the adhika or the right to take shelter of devotion. Then along with devotion, three things must be had. That is, one must experience an awakening of tantra one should experience renunciation, and one must experience happiness or realization. Therefore, if we are performing sadhana bhakti, but we are not having tantra awakened within us, nor are we feeling you know, an arousal of detachment from material enjoyment, and neither are we having realization of Bhagavan, then we have to be understood we are not really performing sadhana. There are many of us, many of people here who are with Gurudev saying with us, they are performing parikram and it seems they are chanting Harinam. But they are not receiving bhakti because their minds are filled with materialistic thoughts and ideas. Therefore to that degree one performs sadhana then to that same degree one will experience a simultaneous freedom from disturbances and an awakening of good qualities or auspiciousness. They will both, both occur simultaneously. To which degree it occurs, this is very, very subtle and very hard to understand. Even if we only take one grain of kitchari, still these three things, freedom from uh, these three things will occur. Satisfaction, bodily strength, and freedom from hunger. In fact, it may come that we will eat so much that if someone says, hey, take a rasgulla, oh, no, no, I cannot take. That means one will eat so much, one must become detached even from eating. So this point is very fine and difficult to ascertain. Therefore, we should consider within ourselves, I have been chanting and doing sadhu sam for 10, 20, 30, 50 years even, but has shraddha or faith appeared within my heart? Even after so many years, we have not experienced happiness in devotional life, nor is any realization appearing within us, nor is tattva gyan manifesting within us. Thus, According to that degree we perform sadhana bhakti properly, then to that degree we will experience satisfaction, happiness and realization. But we cannot say we have not achieved anything. For example, Gurudev says, if we can say, put up your hands, who wants to become a queen in Dwarka, like Rukmini, then only one or two may put up their hands. Who wants to go to Dwarka? There, but therefore we cannot say we have not had any realization. On the other hand, if we say who wants to become a servant of Radhika, everyone wants to become except we do. So we cannot say we cannot have not had any realization because we can understand our goal is to become a servant of Radhika. But really, only a person who is performing Sanat Bhakti properly, they can really feel it and really desire it. Therefore, what is the constitutional position 
of Bhakti. What is the Surup of Bhakti? We have heard that Bhakti has no material cause. Because she is independent, she can appear in the hearts of anyone. Even sinful persons, she may appear, and even qualified persons like the husbands of the Vedic, like the husbands of the Yajna Bhaktis, Bhakti did not appear in their heart. Bhakti does not depend on intelligence, strength, good looks, or wealth. Bhakti depends on one thing. What is that? She depends on shraddha or faith. Therefore, this is the main subject of this book, Madhuri Kanambini. What are the stages of devotion? We should know that saranagati or surrender is not the first stage, rather it is simply the doorway to bhakti. The first step in order to enter the temple of bhakti is called shraddha. Therefore, by constitution, everyone is qualified for this devotion, whether they are women, men, even sinful persons like Jagai Manai or Ajamil, all are qualified for bhakti if they possess the qualification of faith or shraddha. Even Americans are qualified. They are hearing something and they have come here with faith to achieve something. Therefore, this is evidence. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has said, Shraddha Janahaye Bhakti Adhika. The qualification for bhakti is. Shraddha. There is no other material qualification. Therefore, all the species of life, human beings are the most qualified for this. And all classes of human beings have a right to bhakti if they can achieve this shraddha or faith. What to speak of bhakti being dependent on faith, even materialistic processes like karma and gyan, you cannot achieve anything without faith in them. Even if you perform home, fire sacrifice, if you give charity, or if you perform austerities without faith, you cannot be successful in them either. Therefore, Maharaj Patanjali has described faith as being a state where the heart is always happy, the mind is always pleased, where there is no doubt. Therefore, in Panamati Jivan, in spiritual life, then the qualification is a little special or more refined. That faith is Krishna's Bhagavan and performing his bhakti is the best of all activities. By performing Bhagavad Bhajan, I will achieve all auspiciousness, I will achieve everything. Therefore, that which causes doubts to be destroyed and joy to appear in the heart, that is called Shraddha. I think Sri Thakur Bhakti Vinod in Amnai Sutra has said, Mandi Upaya Bhajan Bhakti Mukti Visheshata Sadangir Saranagati. Sadlakshan Saranagati. What is the definition of faith? When the mind is always in a way, always acts in a way which is favorable towards the performance of the limbs of devotion. And that Shraddha, that faith, has six symptoms which are surrender or Saranagati. Therefore, from faith comes all perfection. And all paths rely upon faith for the fulfillment of their desires. And the faith that we require to perform the devotion of Bhagavan, that is special in the sense that it is completely devoid of any touch of the material modes of Sattva, Raja, Tama. It must be completely near good or transcendental.
गिरधारे मंदिर में है साहस दर्श का पैक किया कल हम लोगों का प्रोग्राम यहाँ प्रोग्राम होने के पश्चात हम लोग